Hello and welcome to another tutorial for internet and website development. Uh, today we want to have a look at how to actually load our array that we worked with previously into our um, using our JavaScript and to show it on our web page. Okay, so before we get started, I actually just want to show you um, using our index page, or rather our, J our JavaScript page. So this is where we left off in the last tutorial. Uh, you should have uh, followed that tutorial through and this time we're actually going to um, get our array that we've just used and I'll um, I'll show you the actual res finished result already of how that's going to look and then we'll go back and do it step by step. So if I actually open up the web page here um, we want to get all of our items that we've loaded into our array onto the left hand side of the screen. Uh, just like this is displayed here and we're going to do that using JavaScript in our index.html uh, page. So just, just to recap, we left off here and we, you should now have uh, at least 10 items that have been populated into your array and now we will concentrate on the index file. So this is our JavaScript file here, main.js. We're going to use the my items array to uh, load it into the left hand side where that table is. So I'll just close down this for now and we'll, we'll go straight into our index of course that's that's our index here and we know we load that by opening with uh, gedit. So I'll open up the index first of all. Now the very first thing I want to show you is how to reference your JavaScript file. It's actually just on this line right here so we start off by using a open our script tag and the type is just text slash JavaScript. The source is really important so this line here basically tells it where to get that file from. Now if you're it, it's in relation to where your index file is sitting. So if you go back to this um, if we go back to this folder, my index file is sitting here, but my JavaScript folder is in the uh, so file rather is in the folder and it's one step down so if we go back you can see it's in example project but it's in a folder called JS and there's our file so what you have to do for that is you'll have to go and specify which folder it's in now if that file was sitting um, if I copy that out or cut that out and just to this here you just have to write in the source here main.js but we need to actually specify it's from that folder and then forward slash whatever the file name is so that's how you would reference that there if you're looking to reference your um, CSS file which we'll have a little bit of a look at CSS in a minute uh, but that's how you would reference the CSS as well you just use a different um, thing here which is uh, hate, uh, href CSS folder and then main.css for the file Alright, so what I want to do is we're just going to scroll down a little bit. You, you should already have this template. So let's scroll down and we will start working inside our table body. Okay, so the item code, these are all the table headers that we've already put in. And that ends our table header there. So we, we want to go inside our table body. Okay, and that's where we're actually going to write this script straight away. I'll just enter down a few lines. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is actually enter in our open script tag again. Actually, I might just quickly copy that script from the top. Just going to need that. and we're just going to close that off okay and of course don't forget to end your script tag okay what this basically says is we're going to write some JavaScript directly into our HTML page okay and what this script here is going to do is it's going to allow us to show all of that information that we've already collected into our array which is our basically container 
The first thing we're going to need is a loop. Um, and we're going to use a for loop. If you're unfamiliar with that, you can go and check that out. I'm going to write 4x equals 0, and I'll explain this in, in just a second. While x is less than or equal to, and remember this is using our array, so if your array is named differently, you'll have to change this according to how you've named it. Okay, we'll just put that there, and then x plus plus. I'm going to close that off. Then we're going to open up our loop. Okay, I'm just going to remember always to close that off because we're going to have this looping through. Now, what, what does this all mean? Okay, well, I, I suggest you go and look up how to do a for loop in JavaScript. But what we're essentially doing is saying, set a variable called x to 0, which is our counter. And there's our um, array that we're using. So we're saying, um, while x is less than or equal to the length of our array minus 1, because of course our array starts at 0. So we're looping through every item, which we saw here. We want to step through every item of our array, but we need the x to actually use it as a counter. Okay, so we need that to start at 0, then 1, 2, 3, and actually loops through um, our whole array there. But we have to go minus 1 because we start at 0. So if you don't know what length does, go and look that up as well. We're, it Just look up array.length, which we're saying is just how many items, the amount of items we've got in our array. So that's actually 10. We go back 1 because it starts at 0. Okay, And we have to increment our counter every time. So we get the way to do that is x plus plus. So it goes 0, 1, 2, it goes through our whole list. Okay, the very first thing, now, now that we've got that loop, we need to put something inside that. Okay, we need to write out using document.write, we write out our whole line um, of, of text here. Now this is going to be quite a, a lot of text. What we're saying is use a JavaScript command called document.write to write out our t entire table for us on the fly. So on the go, we're actually writing this out. And I'm just going to get straight into it. We need to put the semi, um, the inverted commas, and then write tr for our first row, which is, of course, this whole row here. So we're writing this whole thing out through JavaScript. This is our first row. So we need to put in tr. We give it an ID. Now just be very careful with these here because we need to add in our x, which is our our counter. It goes through and actually adds each one in. All right, I'm ending um, ending that there, and then I'm going to start my first table data. Just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to add in a label, and then we're going to add in our input type. Now this is for the first thing there, which is our checkbox. Then we add an oops, we add an ID. Um, you're obviously going to change this, but I'm just going to call it label test. We can add an, a name for our input, which we're going to just call item, because that's each item that we're using. The value is going to be quite sim similar to our. I'm going to use x plus. Okay. Now, what I actually want to do is add an. I'm going to just close this off in a second, but I want to add an on click event to this. Um, Remember, we're still in our checkbox here, okay? So I want to add an odd click event to that, but what I want you to do for the meantime is not add anything in there, because we're going to change this later. Just add in those two lines, and we might actually just end that off. No, we won't actually add that for now. Let's not add the on click. 
let's just end our input there. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've made a new table row, we've made some a table data, which we haven't actually ended yet, and we've put a checkbox in. Now the checkbox is of course this here. Okay, we need to have that in. The reason why we're doing it on click is because later on we're actually going to check if that's been clicked and we're doing something here with the quantity and a couple other things we're going to update. So let's just not not put that in for now, but I want to show you how we put our items in. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to write in a little bit of code here. We're going to add my items in and I'm going to copy this once I've I don't want to sit here typing everything out, so I'm just going to... This is from our array, remember? We're using X as our counter, so the one thing you might not have seen here, and you can look this command up as well, is split. Now, this is the part here that we need to write. Then split, just bear with me. We're going to add zero in, and we're going to close that off. And then we need to actually, this is actually all in a label, so we need to close the label off. And then we're going to close our table data. It's a long line here, but I'm just writing it all on the same line. Okay, so that's that's our first bit of table data there. We're actually um, putting in the fir very first item from my items. Okay, and if we go back to this, I'll show you what's happening. So the very first item is is this one here. Okay, it's we're talking about zero, but then what we're actually doing is splitting each of these elements up. So we want to have an item code, our item, and the actual price. So if we flick back to the index, we're splitting it at the comma. So you notice there I had. Uh, if you just see here, sorry, using a comma there, we want to split it up and use the comma as the points at which we split it. So that's why we've got that split. You can look this up on W3Schools, but my items, whichever one it's at, we split it and we want to get the first one, which we always start at zero, obviously. We want to get that one out first, okay? And all we're going to do now is we've ended that table data we need to um, write our other items in. Okay, I'm just going to show you very quickly our quantity. So we're going to move over a little bit. Okay, we need to add in now another table data. And we're just going to Actually, our quantity doesn't come in yet, does it? So we need to just add this in. Oops, that in again. What we're actually just doing here is copying to to split to the next one, which is actually the item name itself. Okay, so just as you saw in this file, as we keep flipping back to my items, the item code there, then apples is the first item, so that's actually referenced at one. So what we're saying is that my item zero is the first line, but it's broken up now into zero, one, and two, okay? So that's how we actually want to print it out. So we just, that's the second one we've put in, we've added the table data in there, so we've got this all sitting in the same row. And we just want to end the TD and then we want to start a new TD. Now, this one here, we've obviously got to put in our quantity box. So we've got first one, second one, now we're doing this one here, which is going to be an input from the user. So what we want is another TD. This time we want an input, and we want to make that a, a text box. Okay, so let's just quickly, um, actually I've I've got it down the bottom, so I'll just I'll just copy and paste it in, so I can see this working. Of course, I've done all this previously. I just need to copy that, and then we end the TD. So 
Okay, you don't really need to see me entering in an input. I'm just trying to illustrate the point here. Okay, so hopefully that will slot in there. We've got our input, which is our text box. I've called it quantity. The ID is quantity as well. Of course, it's a te text box. The value is zero by default. Okay, so when we look at this here, you'll see that there, there's our value. I want it to be set to zero. There is an on change event happening here, but don't worry about this too much for now. You can actually add that in. It's just it's not going to do anything. Just I've got that function working for later on. So you can actually just cut. It's not actually working at the moment. Okay, so we ended off here and we end our TD. The last thing we want to do, and this is a very long line, it's just about to finish. Um, we just want to add in our last item which is of course our price I'll just copy to the end of that line should have a start TD okay so the last item is um, item number two because it goes zero one two and that last item there is our price. If we slick, click back, that's what it will be throwing in from the um, array. Okay, so it's putting all these, it's putting one, two, and three, or zero, one, two, rather, from the array, and then this item in here uh, is going to be just an input that the user has to put in themselves there. Okay, so we've started the new TD, we've got that item in there. I put a dollar sign in there before just so you can slot that in there for price and end the TD and the whole table row and then of course you have to end it off with that and then the semicolon okay which which is what starts it up here okay so hopefully now what that's going to do is loop through every item and write that particular item to the screen for us uh, commented that off at line 100 so that won't be a 104 that won't be a problem let's just save that off there may be a few errors but we'll have to have a look okay I'll just redo that okay so that looks like it's gone in now to show you that actually working I will change something in the main.js let's change a couple of things around um, okay we'll change that to say 250 just to see if apples is working um, oh, let's just okay let's change a couple of things we'll change watermelon to the top and we'll grab apples and put it in the place of where watermelon was um, I don't know we'll make one of the item codes start with a four five rock melon mangoes just so we can see that this thing is updating um, maybe I'll just okay I'll just add a, a new item in. What do we want? Doesn't really matter. Potato. Something like that. Save that off. Should be a new item with those other one changed. If we refresh it. And you can see already, okay, that's been updated. There's our watermelon up the top. There's our new numbers and there should be a final uh, potato at the bottom so okay so that's that's working nicely and okay so it's working from our array we're getting all the um, elements out of here out of my items that we set up in the beginning we're using our JavaScript here to loop through each item it's really important that we set up the loop otherwise it won't work properly and we just write our entire line um, of basically that the HTML we're writing that out as we go so we can just update that array and it can change according to how we've updated it the last thing I want to show you is just a little bit of CSS so what we're actually doing here we've got two things set up in a div tag one called table container left as an ID and that's finishes down the bottom here and we've got our table inside of that now there's a couple of things happening here there's also table container right which will um, 
obviously be left and right side so table container left I'll just show you that actually working we inspect this here you can see that if I click on that just above there it says div it's got a hash sign table container left okay uh, this is a this is a nice little um, function a uh, feature that we've got here um, it's called web developer if you want to download it uh, at home and you can actually just inspect all of your elements okay so if we just click on that there we can go into style you can see that this is my stuff coming out of the main.css file okay and I've got a couple of things happening here if we just go into that file open it with gedit I'll show you that happening down the bottom so table container left is exactly what we set out here in our CSS file and it just you set it out with a hashtag at the front which says that it's referencing that div and table container left just divides it into that table and then table container right is my one on the right side when I use the when I select the products eventually if I just select those and add them to the right hand side of the screen that's my container for that side so you can actually just use your CSS there and change whatever you like I can change it so it floats to the right I can change the width I can change my border in fact I'll show you that updating so if I change that to say uh, a 5 pixel now let's make it a bit more say 8 pixel solid border and that's my color got a bit of padding around that there I'll show you that updating. So I'm just updating my CSS file here and it will actually change the result of this little border I've got. So you can see how that's already changed the thickness just by modifying that CSS file. So I'll just change that back to the original two pixels. But that's how simple it is. So I'll save that off, change it back and it actually changes my border there okay so my border of the right side of that container it changes it and then if I go into my index you'll see that you need to have this in here so it tells it to put a divider in and have this table contained within that div tag so that's just a couple of ways there we can use CSS um, of course I've got a couple of other things here set up as you can see table container right I've got shopping basket I've also got my table as another um, thing in my CSS so here's my table it sets out the width and I don't have any padding there I've got a gene uh, generic table data and that sets out that and obviously if I hover over my um, table row any table row it'll actually change the background there so I'll just I'll show you that actually working just as something an extra change that to red because I know that that's just going to make it a red color okay every row I hover over will change it you just need to research these codes and find out how to modify certain things but that's just giving you a um, a different sh sort of shade of that orange so you can go to different websites and reference that code there and find out how to make that happen I've just saved that again so I'll go back to my original orange color and there it is so hopefully you've learned a few things um, through this tutorial uh, I encourage you to um, go ahead and make your array and use the index file to um, just spit out that that code so it will actually um, put out every item that you need there and you can just of course opt update that through your um, JavaScript file so thanks for watching